Hello students, welcome to the time classes. Here we are discussing a series of questions here. In that part here, let us discuss one question now here. Okay, this question here is in topic logarithms. Okay, this is a very good question here. We have actually two parts present in it here. I mean two things tested. That is one in logarithms, one is in geometric progression here. Please observe this carefully here. It reads log x to the base a is equal to 9, log y to the base a is equal to 1 plus 2b, a and b are positive integers. It says if x, 64 and y are in a geometric progression, find the number of values that x and y can take here. That set x, y that can take. How many values are there here? That's what we need to find it here. Okay. Please observe carefully. There are four parts actually which are important here. Okay. In this question. What are they? It said this one. First part. A and B are positive integers. Mind it. Whatever values A and B can take here, they should be always an integer. They should be a positive integer. Negative values not allowed. Zero is not allowed for A and B here. Okay. Next one. In logarithmic uh, here conditions, it says log x to the base A is equal to nine. One more. It says log y to the base A is equal to one plus two b. And the other one, it says x sixty four and y are in a geometric progression here. Okay. Let's interpret this. Logarithmic parts first here carefully here and then we'll proceed further here. See here. It said, okay, now what do we know here in logarithms here? Suppose if it is given log okay a to the base x is equal to b here, in an exponential form here, we could have written it as what? It is a is equal to x raises to the power of a b here. Okay, logarithmic terms given like this log a to the base x is equal to b here in exponential form we write it a is equal to x raised to the power of a b here mind it okay in both these expressions here the base actually x will remain the same okay that's a point to identify now let's let's input these ones whatever is given if it is given log x to the base a is equal to 9 here what can we tell we can tell it this way that x is equal to a raise it to the power of a 9 here right in the same manner log y to base a is equal to 1 plus 2b so expressing it in an exponential form we can write it as y is equal to how much it is a raise it to the power of how much it is 1 plus a 2b here okay yep now, now also we have this one x is 64 and y are in a geometric progression now what do we know when do we have, when, uh, when do we say that uh, series of terms are in a geometric progression when the ratio of consecutive terms is a constant please understand okay what we know here in a geometric progression here okay in a geometric progression it is the ratio of consecutive terms ratio of consecutive terms is a constant ratio of consecutive terms is a constant here that's what we have to apply it here okay in this statement here so hence yeah we can we can write it as it is x by a 64 is equal to 64 divided by y here that would imply x y is equal to 64 here. 64 square okay yes it is true here if it is given three terms are in a geometric progression we can simply tell it square of the middle term is equal to the product of the other two terms okay from this given statement x 64 and y are in geometric progression straight away we have to identify x into y is equal to 64 square okay now please see already we know this one x and y in terms of a uh, this one a's and b's here so that's what we are going to substitute in this third equation here and then get the simplified form of it here okay so now combining substituting the values of x and y from the first two parts here into the third one we get something like this here what is that it is a raised to the power of a 9 into a raised to the power of a raised to the power of how much it is 1 plus a 2b here should equal how much it is 64 square here okay 64 what do we know it is uh, 2 power 6 here so this we can write it as what it is 2 power 6 whole square here 2 power 6 whole square is 2, 2 power 12 here. no doubt but here observe this one now in the left hand side here it is a power 9 into a power 1 plus 2b here okay now in indices in loss of indices we know this one a raised to power of n into a raised to power of an n is equal to a raised to the power of an m plus a n here so that's how okay so adding the powers here we get something like a raised to the power of how much it is 10 plus a 2 b okay 10 plus 2 b this is equal to 2 power 6 whole power 2 here right now 10 and a 2 here both are even numbers that is 10 plus 2 b is an even number so hence this whole thing here we can write it as a Okay, uh, I mean this 2 if I am taking it common outside, it is 2 times of 5 plus b. So this whole thing we can write it as a raised to power of a 5 plus b. Okay, whole square is equal to 2 power 6 and then whole square. Right now, okay, so it's a further simplifying, we get it like this. a raised to power of a 5 plus b is equal to, how much? It is 2 raised to power of a 6. Okay, now 
here okay what can be done let us guess actually what values of a and b satisfy this condition okay now see here what do we know a is a positive integer if a is a positive integer what values can it take it can take either one or a two or any other number here okay let me guess this one now let me see here let me check what happens if a is equal to one let me check what happens if a is equal to two here let me check what happens if a is equal to something like a three or more here okay three four five and so on okay let that let me check it here see here if i take a is equal to one here what happens okay substituting a is equal to one here we get something like one raise it to power of a five plus a b is equal to two power six here. please mind it also we know this one b is a positive integer okay so it implies 5 plus b is a positive integer and 1 raised to that number is always equal to 1 okay and that 1 can never equal this one 64 here so hence we can tell this is definitely wrong since it is definitely wrong here that would imply this one that a cannot be equal to 1 okay now let us see what happens if i take a is equal to 2 here if i take a is equal to 2 here i'm going to get a 2 raised to power of a 5 plus a b is equal to 2 power 6 here since the bases are same here, the powers actually can be equated. Okay, so that would imply that 5 plus b is equal to 6 here. That would imply 5 plus b is equal to 6 here. That would imply b is equal to 1 here. Okay, b is a positive integer, already we know. Okay, here a is equal to 2 is a positive integer, b is equal to 1 is a positive integer. So this one is a, okay, the uh, valid set of numbers satisfying this condition. Now see. What if I take a is equal to 3 here? If I take a is equal to 3, I'm going to get a 3 raised it to the power of a 5 plus a b is equal to 2 raised to the power of a 6 here. Okay, here we'll tell for two equal numbers, for the two numbers which are equal, okay, if the if the base actually is increasing here, the power should be actually less here. Okay, the power actually should be decreasing. I mean, if these two numbers were equal, for sure it should happen that 5 plus a b actually must be less than 6 here. That implies b should be less than 1 here. If b is less than 1 here, what values can it take here? It can take values something like a 0, minus 1, minus 2 and so on. But those ones are not the positive integers. Okay, so definitely true here that if a is equal to 3 here, what do we get? b, we are not going to get a positive integer. It will always be a, uh, this one, non, it will be a, it will be a numbers here which are not positive integers here. And those ones are not allowed here. So hence, we can tell this one. So hence we are telling this one that a cannot be equal to a 3 also here. Similarly, same reasoning we can tell this one any number greater than 2 also, okay, doesn't give a valid number for a b here, doesn't give a valid number for b. So hence we can tell this one a cannot be greater than 2 also here. So what numbers are allowed actually? It is only this one a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 1 are the only numbers which is satisfy the given condition. So now when we know that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 1 are the only numbers satisfying this condition here. So now let us try to find out the values for x and y. Okay, so here what do we get? x is equal to what now? It is a 2 raised it to the power of 9 here. 2 raised to the power of 9, how much is it equal to? It is 5, 1, 2 here. Right? And y is equal to how much now? It is a raised to the power of a 1 plus 2 b here. That is a 2 raised to the power of a 1 plus 2 into a 1 here. That is how much? It is 2 cube here, which is equal to 8. Okay, that means how many pairs of x and y are we getting? There is only one pair. Okay, x equal to 5, 12 and y is equal to 8. There is only one pair actually which satisfies, okay, uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, that's the only set of values that can satisfy the given condition. Question is asking, find the number of values that x and y can take. The answer should equal how much? It is 1. Option B is the answer. Okay, so that was the discussion on this particular question here. Okay, thank you very much.